Hey guys, hi, how are you? Today I'm pretty excited to present you the 2022 Tesla Model X. I want to show you some of the features and also what's new for 2022. Also, I want to talk about what the Model X offers over the smaller sibling, the Model Y, which costs nearly half of the Model X. In fact, the Model X is the most expensive vehicle in the Tesla lineup. Maybe you're on the fence between the Model Y and the Model X and are wondering if the Model X is worth the premium. This one here, as it sits, is priced at around $123,000 if you were to order today. Let's see what you get for the money. The Model X has been around since 2015 in its current model being conceived back in 2012. So this design, in my opinion, is starting to show its age. Then again, this body shape allows the Model X to have the lowest drag coefficient of any production SUV. For 2022, the Model X comes in two versions, the base and the plat. So technically, it's not called the base, it's just called the Model X, which is this one, and the plat. Aesthetically, both versions are pretty similar as they both can be optioned with 20 and 22 inch wheels. There's nothing base about this one with its output of 670 horsepower and a zero to 60 of under four seconds, which makes this SUV be up there with the Macan turbos and the Hellcats and such. It's only slightly slower than my Model Y performance, but the Model X offers over 40 miles more worth of range. I would like to add that we pay too much attention to range when we should be paying attention to efficiency of the car since that's what hits our pockets. It's like bragging about having the biggest gas tank in a car, doesn't make any sense, right? In that department, Teslas in general are known to have pretty efficient batteries. As far as the body, as I said earlier, for this year, it goes pretty much unchanged, take it or leave it. The wheel design is new for 2022. These are 20 inch wheels wrapped in Continentals. They're 265 by 45. They should offer a very comfortable ride compared to the more aggressive 22 inch wheels, which I've seen and they dress up the Model X pretty good, but it will cost you over $5,000 for the wheel package. I think that for that money, you can get better aftermarket wheels that add uniqueness to your particular Model X, because that's one of my pet peeves about the Model X and the Model Y is that they don't offer enough options to make your car stand out more. So if I were you, I would just save the money and maybe get aftermarket wheels that you can find for either less money or you can get better wheels for the same money. The Model X is 199 inches long, but you couldn't tell because the shorter overhangs. One drawback is the dash to axle ratio that I don't really like, this right here. Kind of makes it look like a front wheel drive vehicle. The wheelbase of the Model X is about three inches longer than the Model Y. It's also shy of three inches wider than the Model Y. The ground clearance is marginal, but it can be adjusted thanks to its air suspension, unlike that of the Model Y. One aspect of the Model X that I really like over the Model Y is the front fascia. The headlights are larger, more prominent. The Model Y front end looks uncooked, like an unfinished product. And this, if you have followed my channel, I have said how this is one of my least favorite areas of this car but in the model x you have this emblematic grille that dresses up the car really well as well as the bigger headlights which i think fill the front end of this car better with this nice larger running lights one thing that i really like for this year is that the various exterior trimmings have been blacked out earlier models had chrome here uh, and chrome has never been my favorite. So in this black car, it sits really well, black trim with black paint and the black wheels. In this case, the color black comes at a premium cost. The Model X weighs 5,219 pounds and can tow about 5,000 pounds. The refresh saw a weight drop of about 200 pounds. The weight of the battery is around 1,300 pounds because for this year, the battery is lighter and it's more efficient. Compare this to the Model Y, which weighs around 4,500 pounds, but it has a battery that is 25% smaller and also tows only 3,500 pounds. For this year, the Model X comes with this cool key fob, the coolest I have ever seen. It doesn't have physical buttons in a traditional way. You can have it in your pocket, and then you approach the vehicle, tap the handle, and the door opens for you. Once you're in the car, you press the brake pedal, and the door closes for you. Amazing. Same thing, if you press this button, the door will open for you. Let's close this door. Oh, I didn't do anything, it closed by itself. See how roomy it is? 
So let's get on the passenger side because this is taken. So you close it right here. So this is a perfect scenario where you can see that this car is too close to this car. So these doors have a sensor that won't allow the door to open and hit something. So what you do is you open the door. It's probably gonna sense that the car is too close. So all you have to do, now that you verify that there's no problem, there's a button right here and you have to hold it and then it opens all the way. So what you have here is a massive opening to the car. So for older people, imagine how practical it is to climb in this car and then to retract the seats. Look how they fall completely flat and you have this massive storage area in the back. Remember, the back seats don't have any cooling, but they are heated. So this is a five-seater configuration, probably my favorite. I don't have a lot of use for the seven-seater. It would be nice to have these captain chairs that the car offers as an option, but it comes at a hefty $6,500. This small third screen gives rear passengers access to things like wireless gaming, the music library, climate controls, which is great because it gives rear passengers full integration to the experience. You have two USB-C outlets and these retractable cup holders. Because it's a dedicated EV platform, you get the benefit of a flat floor that adds room and comfort to the rear passengers. And I see that the Model X offers better materials to cover the back or the front seats, but it doesn't have any map pockets like the ones you get in the Model Y. Also, because of the Falcon wing doors, you don't get the panoramic roof that you get in some of the competitors to include the Model Y, but I love the attention to detail here with this emblem that reminds passenger in the back that they're riding in the cool Model X. All the doors can be locked by triple tapping the remote with the exception of the front, which you must close manually. About the rear cargo area, this Model X comes with the 5 seat configuration, which is the one that offers the most cargo area. Tesla doesn't offer any breakdown in cargo space, but I can tell you from experience that the bigger rear opening makes this appear to have more space available for larger objects. And just like the Model Y offers this extra compartment here, which is pretty generous and where you can hide your valuables, and then it also offers another one here that is kind of shallow but it's something and just like in the model y the x doesn't have a privacy cover to cover your valuables in the rear cargo area the model x comes with a total of eight cameras three here by the rear view mirror and then two more here by these cool trims that are emblematic to tesla and i really like what tesla does here because this looks great but also house these important cameras that are aimed at addressing the blind spots most cars have them under the side mirrors but tesla does it best hiding them here then you have one more camera on each b pillar and then one more in the rear i could spend hours talking about this center screen um, and i wouldn't get to the surface of everything that you can do this is so configurable for example in the model x it, you can have the option to move the screen and tilt it whichever way you want or if it's a passenger that is maybe watching a movie while you're charging the car or waiting for somebody you can move it in that direction as well then you can configure your driving to your liking you have in the case of the model x you have three different drive modes chill sport and insane i usually keep mine in chill and my car the model y only has chill and sport this one has a third one this it has the insane um, you also have the stream mode you can have comfort standard sport i usually keep it in comfort but even the comfort feels pretty heavy which i like this is one of my favorite features about the model y is how it drives for running comfort, the Model X comes with adaptive suspension damping in four settings, which are comfort, auto, sport, and advanced. And you can also adjust the air suspension height with five settings, which are very high, high, medium, low, and very low. And what's cool about it is that the car will remember the locations where you raised it to high and very high, and will remember to do so the next time you're there. So for this year, the most controversial piece in this car will be the yoke. And I have such a hard time pronouncing that word. I am sorry. And the horn is not in the center, it's right here on the side. And then obviously with the voice commands, you can do a lot of things like turn off AC. Awesome. And the Model Y, you control those voice commands with this. And here you have it specific specifically here and then you have things like your windshield wipers right here you're gonna hear some ac noise because it's kind of toasty right now so i'm sorry if that messes with the 
quality of the audio, but I am frying here. So let's turn on the AC again. Turn on AC. Great. It's so minimalist. Remember you lost the ability to shift your own gears right here. Um, so now you have it on the screen as well. So what you do to go forward, you just push the car up. So you press the, the brake pedal. And then if you want it to go in reverse, you just slide it back. And then you can also do the automatic, um, but I don't know how to do it. So we just left it in park. Is that amazing or what? Then you can stream music through your own apps. I do have a Spotify account, so you can do Spotify. Model X and the Model S are the only ones to offer XM radio. And then you can also stream music through your Bluetooth. Remember, these cars don't come, don't come with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So that's a ding that I have on this car. Why not? I don't understand it. But the integration of the Bluetooth is really good because you can access your messages, actually respond them, respond to messages with your with your steering controls as well as pickup calls and the Bluetooth access your contacts and basically you have full access to your phone through Bluetooth. So it is not bad, it's well integrated and I like it, but I do wish that it had Apple CarPlay. As far as the center console, it's very similar to that, the Model Y, it's, uh, it has this wireless chargers right here and I really like what they did for the redesign because they kept it so clean yet they gave you you know, access to storage and they give you the cup holders and you can close it halfway or you can close it all the way and now you have a super clean look uh, unlike my Model Y that has the cup holders exposed at all times. And then you have more storage right here and all these materials feel pretty good. I really like what they did with the redesign because it does look a lot nicer than prior models. In this case, what they did, you have some injected molding right here that is pretty high quality if you ask me and then you have vinyl and you have soft vinyl right here and these pockets are lined unlike the ones in the model Y so you can see where some of the extra money went and you have this fabric finish right here that looks very interesting I do like it so let's close this door so I don't have an issue with the quality of the interior maybe because coming from a model y this is a nicer interior what's really impressive about this interior is this windshield look at this uninterrupted view all the way back here so when you're driving you literally feel that like you're in a spaceship and you may be wondering what about the visors well the visors are right here there are magnets so they're pretty well implemented and they're foldable you want to make it a little bit wider and then when you put them to the side you can just fold them and put them away like that pretty invisible if you ask me and then you have this very very small rear view mirror but the visibility of the rear window is a little bit better than that of the model y and correct me if I'm wrong, but these side mirrors look a little bit bigger than those on my Model Y. Another big difference between this and the Model Y is that the Model X has perforated cooled and heated seats for the front passengers and heated seats for the back. So once again, John, thank you for allowing me to showcase your car. It's, uh, it's been a great experience, man. Of course, my pleasure. Did you consider the Model Y at all when you were shopping for this one? Yeah, my wife and I looked uh, towards the Model Y. Uh, we compared our options and kind of looked around to see what would be the most convenient with having a, a newborn and seeing what would be the easiest for her to be able to take the, the child in and out uh, with the stroller and the car seat. So uh, the ease of use for the Falcon door wings uh, really sold us on having the X versus the Y. Um, and then just cargo space in general uh, really sold me on Tesla over other comparisons. Basically, you get the functionality of a minivan on a, basically on a sports SUV. Uh, it just looks so wide and so accessible. And I'm glad that you brought that, that car seat because it really shows the usability of what I consider to be the best family SUV. The center console is just super simplistic. Uh, it's very similar to operating today's mobile phones and all the features available on it are really easy and quick to use 
on, on the main dashboard so I would say the ease of use is definitely the best feature it's just like a normal car as soon as you uh, get the adjustment down it's just like driving a normal car and it's pretty simple some of the intuition is gone like you were so used to activating the horn from the center pad and now it's not there it still looks like you can do it but you won't do it so it's just on the side so honestly as much as i like the car i wonder what i would do in a case of emergency that i need to haunt to draw somebody's attention would i go to the pad or would i remember that there's a horn right next to it i don't know you don't have that obstruction that you usually have to find once you um, start messing with the settings of how you sit in this vehicle and how you um, move the steering column to your liking sometimes that, that cross that round steering wheel will block some of the features on the on the actual screen so that's gone so now you don't have that you just have an open view all of my previous cars i've always had to upgrade the sound systems uh as soon as i heard this one not touching anything it sounds amazing for a stock sound system that you get out of a car it's definitely quiet i'll tell you that and uh, sometimes i forget that i'm still driving with how quiet it is i realize oh yeah uh, there's definitely uh some road noise but that's it uh, it's it's very quiet the way they did this windshield how it's kind of tinted kind of just all the way to the front and then where a regular windshield will start that's where the tint starts fading away so this you can see the transition here hopefully i can catch you with my camera it's actually pretty good because it's pretty sunny out and uh and you can see the the difference between the regular part of the windshield and where it starts buying into where traditionally you will find the the roof of the car so no problems in that department um really 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 impressed um one thing that I wanted to ask you is, you say you have a thousand miles in this car. Is this going to be a high mileage car or did you plan to put a lot of miles or or not? Not really. Uh, once the three gets here, that's going to be the primary everyday use. And this is kind of just the, the family car on the weekends. In my view of electric cars is the more you drive, the more it makes sense. So these cars are so hassle free. I have about 17,000 miles on mine. I still have yet to visit the shop for any maintenance. So I, I just, that's one thing that I've learned that we look at electric cars differently than we would at a nice car because they don't require any maintenance. The single pedal driving is so well implemented in the Tesla. I've heard of other brands not doing it so well. And we assume that all electric cars have to be fast and have to be technologically advanced when it comes to the to the user interface and all that but i think this is the most advanced how long did it take you to get your model x over a year over a year huh? over a year yeah so you jump in the redesign when you when you heard about the redesign that's when you ordered yours or before that i had actually gotten it right before they announced the redesign um, and then as soon as the redesign was announced um, i kept my order in place i wasn't 100 percent sure at that time but i had put the order in Oh wow! Just, so, just to make sure. So you got really lucky with price. I did. I also got really lucky with the no. price as well. This is so weird because what I think John paid, and I don't know if he wants to disclose that in the video, what I think John paid for this car is about 20% less of what people are paying for it today. Uh, because this, this car has gone up in price in the last few months tremendously. The part that really had me shocked was how easy it was to do everything through Tesla. From the app on managing the car to even when I was placing the order on the website, it was just very simple. Like you said, you, the price you see is the price you pay. And even on purchase day, um, going through the app and going through the agreement, it's super hassle-free, very easy. Um, it's probably the best method that I, I would say any car buying experience I've had. There was a couple things that I, I noticed and I took note of, um, and they, they quickly showed me how to create a service appointment on the app. And I created an appointment and already got it taken care of. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. they're I very, mean... very simple process as well. Thank you, John. Don't, as always, don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. For my final thoughts, I would like to say that John owns an impressive vehicle. I did not think that I was gonna like the Model X as much as I did. To me, the pinnacle of technology. And if you add the access to the Tesla supercharging network, then you have the best electric SUV on the planet.
period. But it won't come cheap at 120 something thousand dollars. I can think of better ways to spend my money. For example, get a Model Y long range for the wife and get myself a Model 3 performance for about the price of the Model X. But my guess is that if you're considering the Model X, then money is not one of your concerns. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.